counter days, right? So this is right. a, a pre, <laughs> amazing, pre-civil rights. <laughs> amazing. Sorry, inappropriate laughter. I'm laughing at us, okay? More than anything about how we can word such a thing. But uh, anyway, Tom Lee, would you agree that Tom Lee is a worthy hero? Very worthy. He's a heroic figure, okay? Now, heroic figures, this is the background. Uh, what is that in the background? Hernando de Soto, a tribute to. A tribute to Hernando de Soto. Okay. Uh, so, what bridge is that? What goes over that bridge? Interstate 40. Interstate 40. Interstate 40. So, this is possibly, mm -hmm. I would argue, this, this bridge carrying Interstate 40 over the Mississippi River in, into West Memphis, Arkansas. Uh, remember free the West Memphis Three about 20 years ago or so? Okay. This bridge carries Interstate 40 over above the Mississippi River. Interstate 40 runs from Wilmington, North Carolina, on the Atlantic, all the way to Bakersfield, and it crosses here at Memphis. So, uh, would you say, or would you be open to, open to saying this is the most important crossing over the whole Mississippi River? Perhaps so. Perhaps. Very so. likely. I think it is. I mean, I know I'm the one wearing this 901 hat, uh, 901 our esteemed area code here. And thank you very much for taking me to Memphis Madness uh, a couple weeks ago. Right. But that was much fun, uh, you know, when we brought the, the uh, Penny Hardaway era of the University of Memphis basketball. But anyway, in my biased opinion, I believe that is the most important river crossing in, uh, in the whole country. But we named the most important bridge over the Mississippi River over Hern after Hernando de Soto. Hmm. Hmm. Would you he, would you say he's a hero like Tom Lee? No, okay. I'm not not sure that he is a worthy hero. Okay. Now, so what do you know about him, Brian? That he has a bridge he's and a, a bridge. county and a county and a city and a city. Yes, De Soto County, Mississippi, which is the next county to the south of here is um, is actually like what 20 minutes away roughly Would you say 20 minutes away without traffic roughly okay and the county seat of DeSoto County is called what Hernando Hernando Mississippi is in DeSoto County so this guy got a lot of pub publicity Hernando DeSoto well what can you tell me about the man he's a conquistador he's a conquistador not a not a keister like like they call him over at Olive Branch High School, right? Because mm -hmm. they can't say the word conquistador or conquistadores. They call them keisters. Mm -hmm. I thought I thought that what you sat on was your keister. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, anyway, keister with a QI, Q U I, but whatever. Okay, mm -hmm. so now Hernando de Soto was a conquistador. So he came through here. Is that what it was? Did he, did he found Memphis or something, or? One of them. One of them, one of those guys did. No, 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 but actually, Hernando Soto came through here in 1541. And nothing of his lasts, except what he really would rather not claim to here. 1541, what did he get done while he was here? A good rampage. He was on a rampage. Okay, well, that probably isn't what they know. Uh, well, we'll talk about that later, right soon after. But, okay, so he celebrated for being what? Founding the... He was celebrated for being the first European <laughs> to ever see Delicious. this amazing river. <laughs> and, he, and he actually saw it up atop a bluff across the state line, not too far from here, uh, in Mississippi. But this is the big city near, near that, so we name important stuff after him. Okay, so I want to clear up a little bit of indication, uh, a little bit of uncertainty here about Hernando de Soto. Us in the Latino world do not claim conquistadors as our heroes that's a very checkered 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 history um, and mostly the black not the white squares but definitely well 
uh, most of the, the black squares. Um, I'm going to put up a link to a video a little while later. Uh, and when you see this, you'll, you'll see a link at the, at the bottom to show a little more authoritatively what he actually accomplished when he was here. Prior and during Hernando de Soto's arrival to the mid-southern United States, what he called the Florida Territory, okay, everything from this river to the Atlantic south of Virginia was basically the, floor, the old Spanish Florida Territory uh, before the English consolidated in the Carolinas. Uh, so he landed in Tampa Bay in 1539. He was already one of the richest men in Spain outside of the king because he was a captain during uh, Pizarro's um, uh, sacking of Cusco, Peru. Now, do you remember uh, the, the, uh, the Incas? Yes. Remember the Incas? Where, where were they? They were in Peru. They were in Peru. The, and and, the, and uh, Pizarro was the conquistador who sacked Cusco. And so what was the other uh, big civilization? The Mayans. The Mayans, that was one of them, but they were and kind the of- And the Incas. Well, the Incas were in Peru. Who, what was the other city where they had all the gold? What was the city where they had, that, where they had all, the other one that had all the gold? Hmm. It was in Mexico. Cortes sacked the, on the site of present day Mexico City, the old Aztec capital. Aztecs. You're right, the Aztecs. Okay. And there was a lot of gold there. So Hernando de Soto wanted to find some gold in the Florida Territory. So in 1539, he landed in Tampa Bay, went up north into South Carolina, burned the Cherokee capital to the ground when he didn't find gold came down south into South Central Alabama, burned the Creek capital to the ground, but he didn't find gold. So they led him up towards this place where he came with the Tunica Indians, basically, and they had their little river pre-civilization, this place was littered with, with uh, villages of Choctaw and Tunica Indians, and they're gone. And he went all the way up to Kansas and decided that was too cold, so he turned back, he got the dysentery and is buried somewhere in the mud on that side of the river. We don't know exactly where. In spite of all his riches, he was buried in the mud. Hmm. Doing what? Looking for gold. They could add all this. You could be speaking Spanish now, Brian. Yes. I could be. You could be. But, nope. He was looking for gold. Instead of planting cotton or planting tobacco. Because men said, there's no gold in Florida. But, Anyway, he was persistent and he died looking to return his men to Mexico. And we celebrate him. We name a bridge after him. We name football teams after him. We name a county after him, a county seat after him, around here. And we put Hernando Soto on the 150th celebration coin 150th year celebration coin of Memphis. This is prefer right before I was born. Let me date myself. But next year we're going to have the 200th anniversary celebration of Memphis. And uh, I would argue we probably are not going to raise as much of a stink about Hernando Soto as we did 50 years ago. And that's a good thing. Because I would argue, he ain't no hero. Did you say very unworthy? I would say he was a very unworthy Hispanic. A very unworthy, unworthy of that. Unworthy of that bridge.
when you, before you look at the video, you're going to see that the na he probably killed upwards of 95% of the Native Americans living in the midst of the United States. And that's a, that's a true genocide. He's a gen he was a genocidal maniac. We name a bridge, a very important bridge, after him. We have a thing about unworthy heroes here, don't we, Brian? We do. Okay, just okay for for, for giggles. Uh, name me one. Nathan Bedford Forrest. Nathan Bedford Forrest. Yeah, we finally wised up and took his statue out. I'm very happy to say that we are not going to take a a, a uh, an episode, tape an episode of this Hispanic Heritage Month in front of that statue because it's no longer there on the public square right by the University of Tennessee Medical Center. Founder of the Ku Klux Klan. And we had a larger life statue put up, put up for him about 110 years ago, right? Right. And he was so much of a hero that he got to be disinterred from his, his original spot and reburied along with his wife below a large pedestal and a larger than life bronze statue of him over a horse. And all Tom Lee gets is this pedestal. We haven't put his, his uh, obelisk back up yet. But Hernando de Soto gets this bridge. I'll tell you a deep, dark secret. Hernando de Soto's mom, care to guess what her last name was? Not de Soto. No. What is it? I don't know. That's it's it. Tinoco. I could have been walking around this city and said, I'm related to Hernando de Soto's mom. Huh? How about that? I am the hot, you know what? Okay, no. That would not be cool of me to do so. That would be glorifying someone who is not worthy of glorification. And I will freely admit it. I don't want anything to, to do with how we made all these Native Americans bury their dead in these huge mounds, all of which were dated to DeSoto's expedition. So if I can say, that's not my hero, you can say, Nathan Bedford Forrest is not my hero. Anyway, we're going to extend this series past um, Hispanic Heritage Month uh, by popular man, of course, because all 15 of everybody who, who saw this series deserve more. <laughs> okay, so more later. Take care. Thanks, thanks, Brian. Thanks.